welcome to Great American Adventure Series. Video. <laughs> you could say that I've been doing this before in regards to Video and Video Church and other recordings that I've done that are extant, as we might say, or exist on the internet. That's uh, not exaggerating because I probably have a good 10,000, maybe, um, videos out there that are probably identified and identifiable as Bible studies. <laughs> yes, I'm a preacher. <laughs> but at this stage in my life, approaching the subjects of kayaking and great American adventures that you live every day and I get a chance to participate by going outdoors and outside into maybe a place that you can't visit or you have yet to go that I might be able to inspire you to get enough courage to take the plunge as it were to get up off the couch and to get out of your house and to go down the Mississippi River you see this series Great American Adventure series began with actually a trip down the Green River in Montana. It was, or Wyoming, I believe. I'm trying to think now, where is the headwaters of the Colorado River? Do you know? Did you know that the Colorado River doesn't start in Colorado? Interesting, isn't it? Funny how that works about please, people, places, and things when people talk about source to sea. You know, you hear about the source of the Mississippi River being Lake Itasca, you know, in Minnesota. And if you're questionable like I am, you start asking questions like, so the source of the Mississippi River is a lake? And you start looking around for other places that lakes are the source of a river. And you don't find them. <laughs> That's probably going to set you up for how I approach Mississippi River Great American Adventure Series, this Vidivo. Likewise, it may be called something else. It could be called uh, Vidivo Adventures or Vidiventures or something like that, where I use the word video and colloquialize it, so to speak, in order to fit a format that might be palatable to someone that's looking for maybe wanting to be inspired to get up off the couch, as we said earlier, and get to do something that they never would have imagined themselves doing, or vicariously participating in my adventures. You could say that I've worn a lot of hats. As a matter of fact, I call this my Louisiana hat, because I'm probably going to wear it down in Louisiana on the Louisiana Loop, which I'm getting ready to do on February 1st, 2018. Now I'm going to wind up on the river maybe one day a little bit earlier because my Greyhound bus arrives January 31st at 4 a.m. And because I can't afford a motel room, I'm probably going to haul everything down to the river and get my butt down to a campsite and then come back to the Baton Rouge sign in order to start what we call the Louisiana Loop which is becoming the last chapter in the book series that I'm writing about my adventures on the Mississippi River. Sometimes it's called the Mississippi River Run. Sometimes it's called Headwaters to Gulf Waters. Some of the books are called, what are they called? Gee, I already published a bunch of them. Let's see, the poetry books are called River in Motion. There's a book series. It's probably going to be seven series long. There's two books out currently. Um, the Mississippi in the Mississippi in the first person is a I believe a seven part series that is one book's already out and it may go into a lot more books but volume two is already being processed and might be finished as I paddle down the river this year but basically what I did was that I traveled from what people call the source of the Mississippi River which is Lake Itasca and a little dam that they put there for the water to run over and rocks on top 
to make it look all natural and you start there and there's a little signpost that says 2,333 miles from here you're going to go to the river you know and find yourself in the Gulf of Mexico Let's see hmm there's that problem again that I keep mentioning source is a lake and the sea is a gulf do you begin to get a question in your mind about hmm as Arsenio Hall would say source to sea is really lake to gulf maybe headwaters to gulf waters will make a little more sense when we get into this video series that we're calling the great American adventure or tall tales from the Mississippi River because both of them are going to apply you see I like to be a little bit honoring of those who have gone before me but I like to be a little bit factual about the actual reality of what you're going to see and encounter experience and do and probably find out sooner or later that maybe somebody might be pulling the wool over your eyes about this source to sea idea you see even naturalists that do source to sea have questions and questioned why they call some of these great rivers source to sea when you start for instance like on the Missouri you start at three rivers where the Park Service says to start from if you're smart or you hike your way up to this little tiny bubbling babbling you know kind of marshy little place in the rocks that you know the water trickles out and then trickles down and maybe 20 miles down river or more you find yourself in boulders and you can't put a boat in anyways but you know you're gonna somehow claim to have gone from the source the ultimate source because you hiked it and you walked it and you did it and then you, you know kind of like finally got into a boat and finally went farther down and then eventually got to the landing point where most people call source nowadays with the park service and then you went all the way down the Missouri River, over hill, over dale, over dam, over trail, over every other little obstacle that there is, and you got to the Mississippi River. And then went down the Mississippi River all the way to the Gulf, and then you said, I made it. I went from the source to the sea, which they're now calling the ultimate source to the ultimate sea. Oh, no, wait a minute. They only call it the ultimate source to the sea. You see, the reason why I'm mentioning that is because I'm probably going to go down the Missouri River in 2019. Doing that, I have to determine again, am I going to use headwaters to gulf waters or do what I'm about to explain to you of why I stopped going down the Mississippi River from Lake Itasca to the sea in Donaldsonville. Now, I had a lot of adventures all along the way and this video series is going to probably have it in video Mississippi that will explain each and every section and aspect of what you'll probably encounter and have fun seeing slides and pictures and all kinds of doodads and gimmicks and doohickeys and thingamabobs and thingamajigs and songs and things that I do in Vidigo Church that now I'll probably present to you for Vidigo Kayaking. Matter of fact, we might just call it VK for victory. Oh, wait a minute, that's not victory. Oh, well, Vidigo Kayaking or video inflatable or maybe just hot air balloon <laughs> but I tend to have a congenial personality that I want to communicate to people that who I really am probably is closer to what I am on video as you're watching than I am being misunderstood or misapplied in postings or maybe Mississippi River Paddlers or other places, things and people. But now I get to present myself as, hey, what you see is what you get, honey. <laughs> I am that I am. And if I met you on the river, I met you under dire circumstances sometimes, or I was presenting myself with a, maybe a different hat on in order to kind of get along with you because you know what man I'm just kind of struggling heading down this river because I'm not too sure what you're going to do with the city kid you know man I don't know about no canoe but I do what I do in a kayak too so sometimes I had to be diplomatic and polished and professional and 
apologize almost as it were for being in an inflatable kayak because a lot of people didn't like what I was doing in the kayaks I was in and they kept saying it couldn't be done that is until I did it and then when I got along about Donaldsonville I met some more families and I met a lot of people that finally I said you know I've been thinking, you know, and I was talking to the Lord about it, you know, I was going, you know, I'd be pretty prideful of me to say, ha, I did it, those guys out there, you know, them, them people on that blog site, them people on that website, them people that told me no, 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 yes, 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 and I did it my way, you know, pull a Frank Sinatra on them, you know, and kind of, you know, show off, you know, and, hey, I did it, and I'm accomplished, I began to realize, you know, if I'm going to keep trying to inspire people with what I do, and maybe along the way they might ask me about God or religion or, you know, who knows what, that inflatable kayaks, you know, I'll talk about anything, you know. Some people that have met me know I can talk about anything. I've done a lot of jobs in my lifetime. Kind of like what uh, Samuel Clemens did, you know, I mean, you don't realize that he held a lot of jobs. It wasn't just a few, and, you know, maybe he didn't keep them all very long. Maybe he got fired or something. I don't know. I didn't get fired, but, you know. I tend to move around a lot of work and done a lot of variety of jobs along my way. But the point of it being is that when I stopped on the Mississippi River, I stopped to identify myself with those who could not finish. Because I had already gotten all these accolades from people that were posting on the internet. They were saying, congratulations, you did it, you made it. Because I only had like 100 miles more to go, you know. Maybe even maybe 150 miles and I'd already made 2,300 and some odd miles because I'd gone side trips all over the place. I didn't just go straight down Mississippi River. I mean, if someone said, hey, you know, go over this way, I went over that way. Or someone said, don't go, you know, the prescribed detailed route of taking this long way to walk around the dam. Go right over the dam. I went over the dam. You know, I mean, if that was the way to go, I'd try it. You know, I mean, people that were locals were telling me all kinds of things that I tried it. I mean, even John Rusky told me about this island that I almost took a really big side trip and really went way off track. It would have taken me a long time to get back. <laughs> and I was running out of food, so to speak, and finances were getting tight. Of course, well, I was already broke. But the circumstances with which I stopped at Donaldsonville really allowed me to be more of those naysayers felt like they'd won. They felt like, ah, see, we were right. If my pride and ego were such, then I'd say, really? After going 2,300 miles? You know, I'm you know, kind of like, oh, okay, you're right. But seriously, folks, the fact of the matter is, is that I stopped at Donaldsonville because I wanted to. That's all. I just stopped. I prayed about it, you know, which I do at times. You know, I don't tell everybody what I'm praying about. I just prayed. And it was time to go home, so I went home. Now, I knew sooner or later I'd come back and finish it or do it or whatever because, bluntly, I talked to God. God talked to me. God said, you'll do it. You know, it's not now. You know? And I kept thinking, well, why? And I realized there were lots of reasons why. And one of them was because it would shut up the mouths of detractors. People would no longer be accusing me of things falsely. People would no longer, put it bluntly, threaten my life like they did, you know, unfortunately, you know, there were some people that actually threatened my life because I was heading down the river, not doing it their way. Funny how that works. Now they wouldn't do that because, you know, they realize if they say something like that, people record those things. Hmm, maybe I did. <laughs> oh, yes, I did. <laughs> Just in case I was being safe. So there was a little bit of, you know, angst when I was going down the river that was pretty much me looking over my shoulder all the time because I was told if I got far enough down I would be stopped in New Orleans. Now that didn't stop me from me you know pushing it but then I realized well why push it because then it would probably put someone in a predicament where they'd either try to fulfill what they claim or they would just be full of hot air and embarrass themselves. So I figured ah bail on it who cares I do all lots of other kayaking adventures that you go straight through or paddle through or like John Sullivan saying lately you know um, what do they call it paddle through yeah paddle through from beginning to end you didn't stop who cares the fact that you paddle on a river one stroke or 10,000 strokes 
God bless you and God keep you and God help you to get down the river. I mean, river folk and people who enjoy the river do so because we like seeing you succeed. I don't know about others, but I want you to use whatever you enjoy paddling in, whether it's a canoe, a kayak, a stand-up paddle, a hard shell, soft shell, taking a race down, you know, like a lot of... A matter of fact, in my time when I went down the Mississippi River 2016, people were racing down the river. They were trying to hurry up and get to the next bar or whatever it was they were trying to hurry up and get to. I was trying to keep slowing it down more. Well, this time I get the opportunity to prove my postulate for my thesis, so to speak, of turtle society, slowing it down to a crawl. I didn't want to go down the river as fast as I did. And I went down and it took me four months, maybe five, something like that. And now I'm taking two months to do a 400 mile paddle round trip from Baton Rouge down to the Gulf, across to Grand Isle, up Bayou Lafourche. I think I already said this. Sounds like I'm getting old in my old age. Maybe it's because I'm sitting here and I'm anxious to get going and I only have six more days to go. But you get the picture. The idea is that this is an introduction, introducing me to you and how I'm going to present on the river. That is, if I can get this camera going and my high definition camera going and my video phone camera going and then edit it all together with music and sound and lights and action and camera. Da, you know, and present out not a big presentation like, you know, maybe River Gator does or some of these other guys that have some you know, really nice quality CDs that I recommend you getting them. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, I support everyone on the river that's doing their thing. You know, I'll never be a canoeist, you know, and I, God bless those that can and do, but I would drown if I got into a canoe. Believe me, <laughs> you'd have to strap me down and hold me there because I'd tip it over somehow and it'd wind up drowning. But get me in an inflatable kayak and whew, I'm down the river. So, Introducing myself to you, I'm Michael James Stone, you know, and I'm just an old man, so to speak, at least that's the way I look right now, you know, kind of like, you know, all scruffy and scuffy, you know, and kind of like, you know, my, like I said, Louisiana hat, you know, and, and uh, done a lot of things in my lifetime, you know, having lived in Alaska and Oregon and all these other places that are not born and bred and a city kid from Los Angeles, California, you know, that basically knows what it is to be a city kid, you know, and have ethnicities. Being that I am an ethnicity, ha, you didn't know that, did you? <laughs> yeah, I am. Hey, such a deal, you know. Oy vey, you know. <laughs> but hey, you know, I mean, can't we all just get along? I mean, if we're on the water, sit around a campfire, who cares where you come from? What we care about is if you're enjoying what you're doing. Because I would like to see you take this thought in mind. My other thesis that I'm writing is. Um, urban adventures or what do I well, I don't think I call it urban adventures urban country yeah urban country meaning that you can have country life in urban areas you can create a great adventure right where you are you could live out a whole inspiring type of adventure like going down the Mississippi River 2,000 miles in maybe a two mile stretch of the park the regional park where you live. Now, it might be a little hard in LA, Los Angeles sometimes, but I know some places that are kind of a little bit wild, and I don't mean just the places that you have to run like crazy in order for the getaway from the gangs, but, you know, some places that are a little wild, you know, I don't mean like nightclubs either. But, you know, I mean that have, you know, you could at least see trees and water, you know, and kind of get into an adventure. You see, how you view things is what determines for you how much of an adventure it really is. And whether you are outdoors, indoors, or if you're sitting outdoors and like on the Mississippi River, everything is nearby. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's it's not as wild as maybe saying on the being on the border aisles, like up in northern Minnesota, or being in what we call the bush in Alaska, where there is nobody coming to get you, babe. <laughs> if you get in trouble, you're in trouble. You know, you know. Better hope you met somebody along the way. But the point being is that it's not as wild as you think it is going down the Mississippi River. 
and my video video series is going to present to you the fact that you can do it it's that easy it's not that hard and this series will have a variety of offshoots that will take itself into different directions so that you can look at them and maybe view them only when I'm talking about Mississippi River or Missouri River or the um, Utah Lake or inflatable kayaking or great American adventure like this is this series that is and then you'll be able to determine if you really want to listen to someone like me talk and then present this to you and then have it cut up into pieces with music like can you canoe in a little boat built for two or paddling paddling no that's I'm just making that one up but anyways yeah I, I, I've got guitar I've written songs you know I've done synthesizer you know so I've, I've been you know like not in a band but you know I've recorded songs for bands and things you know written lyrics and stuff but the point is is that editing this will be fun to present to you something that maybe will fill the gap when people keep asking me well you got any videos out there well you know I've looked at all the videos that are out there and I'm from Southern California where if I went to the restaurant I could see Hollywood stars you know and they just walk in and have a cup of coffee like everybody else well not everyone does but most of the you know a lot of the humbler ones do so I had seen movie stars all the time, you know, and I just, you know, and saw a lot of filmmakers and new people at different times, you know, and shoot, it was no big deal making videos or movies and stuff like that, you know, I mean, that was just kind of like, if you get your video or movie taken by a producer, that's different, then it becomes something bigger. But now that I live in Utah, I mean, every Tom, Dick, and Harry is making a movie, and, you know, they're either shopping it down in Hollywood or shopping it for the Sundance Festival or trying to make a short or a long or Tribeca or overseas in France and by golly you know why you know I'd rather just make a bunch of videos and throw them out there you know and have fun with them you know so what you're going to see in Great American Adventures is more of a amalgam of trying to promote other people also as well as presenting to you some inspiring moments with music like from the you know okie dokie boys and then from some other blues things you know and some rock and roll and who knows maybe Neil Diamond too or something else that I might be at the moment caught up into that I want to give you something that takes you out of your mindset and maybe causes you to try on a hat maybe a little sideways and do some rap I know I can do some rap. It ain't no jap, it ain't no rap, it ain't no tap, it ain't no way. I'm going to tell you, gal, today that you can do what you want to do anytime you want to do because you can do it. No? Oh, well, so much for rap. <laughs> I'm a rock and roller anyways. <laughs> I'd have to be wide awake and not having been up 12 hours already, which I am now. And I'm um, a little tired, you know, so I'm kind of like, don't sleep much before I'm getting ready to paddle down the Mississippi River. You know, because I get all these thoughts in my head, and I just figured, well, since we're practicing, let's see, how many minutes has it been? 23 minutes? Since we're practicing the video part, I thought, well, why not just record something and throw it out there and say, hey, check it. Dude, check it. <laughs> that even, as you can see in my finger, if you follow the moving finger, that purple back there is a purple flag. Okay, it's the first flag that I kind of like drew a turtle on, you know, and I was like, nah, I'm not going to freestyle it and freehand it. But anyways, you might find some purple flags like this, you know, where I'm camped out, or you might find this big giant banner that I made. Um, I like to play with kayaking, not be so serious that you can't have fun. So you're welcome to join me either here there, no, not in the air, but here at my own home recording these, or on the river, at a campfire. I might ask you to participate if you're somebody that wants to be in a video or video. I might say, hey, you know, you want to talk about your experiences with, you know, kayaking, you know, or canoeing, or, you know, being living here, or whatever it may be, and I may say, hey, here, take the camera, you know. Let me ask you a few questions if you don't know what to talk about. 
Because if you just give me a camera and, you know, a mic, I could talk for days. <laughs> About lots of things. So, closing this out, as I wanted to keep it under 30 minutes, we are going to try to do this eventually, you know, and present them later with music and, like I said, special effects, you know. No, we're not going to clean up the video and make it, you know, like perfect lighting and perfect setting, but rather, you know, kind of get a handle on it and have fun with it, you know. And, and if it takes off and does something positive, you know, maybe we'll throw some CDs out of with it, you know, and you can have them or maybe buy them or donate some money because, believe me, when I go somewhere on an adventure like this, a great American adventure, I go one way. I start off with, I got no money. You know, I mean, I can't afford to do these things. So I don't try to ask people for money and I don't get, you know, support from anybody. I just go out and do it, you know, because, well, you know, frankly, I just don't owe anybody anything then. So I can just do what I want to do, you know. And so being kind of Tom Sawyerish that way, you know, I kind of like to take my Huckleberry Finn Scooby Doo partner and go down the river, you know, and have fun. And so you'll see these videos pop up occasionally that some of them will be in the raw, which this one is. We'll call this maybe um, Mississippi in the raw, number one. And um, all I was trying to do is say hi to you. <laughs> so you know how long I talk. It took me 30 minutes to say hi or howdy or hey, check it out, man. I'm going down the river. You want to come visit? So. Now that you've had a chance to see who I am and where I am, you know, I would like to say to you, you're welcome anytime to come to my campfire and talk, to visit, you know. If you bring some food, I'd really appreciate it. If you bring a beer, hey, that'd be cool. You know, if you're smoking that funny, wacky weed, you know, well, I'm not going to stop you from smoking, but I'm going to ask you to stay downwind. I'm sorry, I just don't like stinking. I don't like stinking thinking, and if it's stinking and it's going to stick to me, I really don't appreciate that. So, because then I have to do laundry. But the point is, you know, you could do what you want to do. I'm not opposed to that. I'm just saying, I mean, I'm, you know, for me personally, if I was working with you, yeah, I'd be opposed to it. But if you're out enjoying yourself, enjoy yourself, you know. I don't smoke. I don't care, you know. It's like, you can smoke. You can have it. You can do what you want. You know, but if you bring me a beer, I'd be too appreciative. <laughs> uh, you know, I got a little rum that I think I'm bringing along, you know, just or in those cold mornings. Coffee, rum. Or is it rum? coffee <laughs> well you know you get the picture but you know it keeps you warm when you're old and when you're old age you know you kind of get these little cranky kind of you know ah, stiffness that you know it helps or sometimes as I've learned you know as being an interviewer or in my professional mode if I wear a suit and tie sometimes you go to parties where you know people don't talk unless you get them a drink or they loosen up a little bit you know once they've had some alcohol to relax settle down. Well, for me, uh, the way I live my life, I relax just by having a great American adventure, even in as simple a way as recording this, and maybe saying, hey, you're welcome. Come along and have some fun on this great American adventure. Series.